Hi, yogis. Let's start for today. Let's start the practice for today. So uh, today's practice is going to be a practice on cultivating stillness. And rather than focus on stillness of the body, let's move to stillness of the mind. And I have found that the best way to cultivate stillness of the mind is to get into balance poses. So the whole idea of a balance is that not only are you connecting with your body completely, but in some way, even your mind needs to be still. Try doing a balance with a thousand thoughts running through your head and chances are you'll never be able to do the balance. Now, I know there are some of you who absolutely hate balances, primarily because you feel you can't hold it up. So today is also a kind of workshop on balances. What you can do is keep a chair or some furniture nearby handy or maybe practice next to a wall. So you always have support and wherever possible, I will, I will actually go through it like a workshop so you can support yourself while you're doing the practice today. So the way the practice will run is initially we'll just do a couple of rounds of sun salutations with variations to kind of warm up the different aspects of your body. So, you know, back bends, forward folds, side bends, twists. And then we'll get into the balances. So the balances we'll hold for a little while to cultivate that stillness. But again, if you find balances extremely challenging, just go ahead and keep some furniture next to you so you can hang on to it and you know practice your balance from a position of stability. So for the first few seconds, just settle down onto your mats, Vajrasan, cross-legged, whatever works for you. Keep it all spine, shoulders relaxed, maybe palms on your laps or palms in front of your heart. Close your eyes. Get into your breath. Let the rest of the day go by. So try not to get too focused on what has been. Remain focused on what is. And gently slow down your breath. And then set your intention for your practice today. The class intention is balance. But within that, you can have your own intention. When you're ready, blink your eyes open, interlace your fingers, inhale, stretch all the way up, keep reaching up. Keep inhaling, growing tall with your spine. And when you're ready, gently let it go. Release your feet from underneath of you. Keep your knees straight. Your heels are about hip distance apart. Remove the flesh from underneath of you. Keep your spine tall. Inhale, take your arms up, maybe look up between your fingertips. Exhale, slowly reach forward as far as you can. And wherever your arms end up, your palms end up, either under your calves, under your ankles, holding on to your big toe or beyond your toes, holding on to the soles of your feet. Inhale, lengthen your spine as much as you can and exhale, bend your elbows, keep pulling down. And feel free to keep movement with this. So inhale, spine tall, exhale, pull in. 
Inhale, spine tall. Exhale, put in. One more. Inhale, spine tall. Exhale, put in. You may stay here for a bit. And the next inhale, release, come up. Drop your right palm down. Take your left palm across outside your right foot. Inhale, spine tall, exhale, twist. So keep reaching your heart up, back is straight, and keep twisting. Slowly release. Right arm up, left palm down, exhale, right palm outside, left foot, left palm behind, inhale, spine tall, exhale, twist. So unlike earlier times, you're actually getting a forward tilt. You're doing a slight bit of a forward fold in your twist. But keep pulling your navel in towards your spine, your heart up and twist. Slowly release, interlace your fingers behind you, squeeze your shoulder blades in, extend your elbows, and then slowly start taking your heart up. Your elbows would probably reach the mat at some point. Use that as a support and keep taking your heart up, chin up. Deep breathing. And release. Take your right palm down, left palm up and across and over to the other side, left palm down, right palm up and across. And release. Bend your right knee. Take your left palm outside your right foot. Bring that foot up. And then inhale, right arm straight and twist. Now, if you want, extend your right knee. If you want, lean back a little more in your twist. Take your left heel one inch off the mat. So it's a little bit of a twisted boat pose. Reach through both your heels. Enjoy the balance on the tip of your tailbone. <coughs> And slowly release. Bend your left knee in, right palm outside left foot, outer edge of the left foot. Get your left heel up, lean back, spine tall. Circle your left arm behind you, look over your left shoulder. If you want, stay here. If you want, extend your left knee. If you want, lean back a little more, take your right heel up. Keep growing tall through your heels. Balance on the tip of your spine. Twisted balance with a boat pose. And slowly release. Bend both your knees. Get your heels close to your hips, maybe heels together, and completely embrace your knees. So your elbows are just outside your knees and tuck your nose in between your knees. Now, if you're one of those who can't get your heels down, go ahead, keep your heels up, but keep trying to press them down as much as you can. If you, of course, can get your heels down, all the better. Just round your back and get your nose between your knees. So become the tiniest self possible. Slowly release. Get your fingertips on either side. Keep your feet about hip distance apart. Reach your arms forward. See if you can slowly stand up without taking any support. Come to the tops of your mats. Feet are hip distance apart. Your heels are slightly wider than your big toes. Push down equally into all four corners of your feet. Pull up your kneecaps, tailbone pointing down. Tuck your navel in just gently. 
increase the length of your spine, relax your shoulders, palms in front of your heart. Just take a moment to see where your thoughts are right now, where your breath is. Just check in with yourself, basically. Where your heart rate is. How do you feel with the energy on your skin? Is it alive? Is it dead? How are you feeling inside your skin? When you're ready, inhale, take your arms all the way up and back. Reach up, reach back, hips slightly forward. Inhale, come back tall. Exhale, all the way down. So circle sweep your arms all the way down. Hold on to the backs of your calves. Keep your hips over your heels. Pull yourselves in as much as you can. Inhale, come up halfway. Heart reaching forward, fingertips moving down. Keep your back parallel to the floor, chin up, exhale, bend your knees, fingertips on either side, get your right foot all the way back. Drop down on your right knee. Slowly get your spine vertical, inhale your arms up. Maybe reach back. If you don't want to reach back, just stay with your spine tall, but keep pushing your tailbone down and forward. If you want, rest your palms on your knee. So make it as easy or as difficult as you want for yourself. No judgment. Get your palms down on either side of your front foot. Pick up your back knee. Get your left palm inside your left foot, your right palm on your right hip. Use the palm to keep pushing the hip down, but take the right shoulder up. So it's a kind of a twist, but without pushing your right hip up. So right hip moves down, your right shoulder moves up. If you think your hip will be hit, take your right arm up. So your right hip point still faces down. It's just your right shoulder twisting up. Slowly release, get your left palm outside your left foot, left foot all the way back, hold plank. Then gently drop down to your knees, take your hips slightly back, bend your elbows, chest between your palms and chin on the mat, knees, chest, chin. Keep your shoulders away from your ears, pull your navel in towards your spine, tailbone pointing up towards the sky. Before you walk your knees back, lie down completely, rest your toes on your mat, all 10 toes on the mat. Inhale, come up gently to Cobra. Exhale, lie down. Inhale, once more Cobra, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, lie down. Inhale, once more, baby Cobra, come up as high as you can. Shoulders away from the ears, shoulder blades squeezing in. Tuck your toes in, come up through your knees, hips up and back, down dog. Spread your fingers, index fingers parallel to one another, elbows straight. You're reaching your tailbone up and back. You're pushing your shoulders back towards your knees. Knees are straight, backs of the thighs pushing against the wall behind. Feel the stretch, elongate your neck along your arms. When you're ready, look forward between your fingertips. Get your right knee in towards your chest. Come up on your left tippy toes, glide forward. Get your right foot all the way down and forward between your palms a little to the right. Drop down on your left knee, walk that left knee further back. Come up to vertical. Keep pushing your tailbone down and forward. Inhale, get your arms up and maybe back. If you want, go ahead, rest your palms on your front knee. It doesn't matter. As long as you're pushing your tailbone down and forward. Circle your palms down on either side of your front foot. Pick up your back knee. Right palm comes inside your right foot. Your left hip, uh, your left palm on your left hip. Left hip keeps moving down. Inhale, spine tall, exhale, left shoulder moves up. So if you notice, it's 
the twist doesn't go very far. It doesn't matter. If your left hip is behaving, circle your left arm up, maybe help with the twist a little bit. Slowly release your left palm down, right palm outside, right foot, left foot all the way forward, feet hip distance apart, straighten your knees, forward fold. Wherever you feel comfortable. So palms behind your calves, sliding down towards your knees, flat on the mat on either side of your feet, whatever works. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle sweep your arms all the way up. Stay vertical, look up between your fingertips. See if you can get your heels as high off the floor as possible. So basically on your toes and the balls of your feet, reaching your fingertips up, keep looking up if you can between your fingertips, reach even higher, really want those calves, four, three, two, one, slowly drop your heels down, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, fingertips on either side, get your left foot all the way back, keep your hips low, drop your left knee down, slowly come up to vertical, circle your left palm around behind your left knee and walk your fingertips as far back towards your left heel as possible, but keep pushing your tailbone down and forward. So there's no point in Lifting your hips up and back and doing this. So you're not getting points reaching your heel. You're getting points for keeping your tailbone down and forward, walking your fingertips as far back as you can. If you want to release your right arm up and back. Feel the stretch on your left psoas. Feel the compression on your left upper back. Slowly come back, palms on either side of your front foot, pick up your back knee, left palm next to right foot, right palm outside right knee, inhale, spine tall, exhale, twist, take your right arm up. If you want, twist a little more, but keep your left knee straight, don't buckle into your left knee, keep your left shoulder above your left wrist. Look up at your right thumb, circling across. Slowly release. Palms shoulder width apart. Right foot all the way back. Plank, shoulders over wrists. Hips aligned with shoulders. Chin up. So here I'm letting my knees buckle in slightly. Here I'm pushing with my thighs towards the ceiling. So back of the thighs up towards the ceiling. So that really engages the core, really engages the legs. When you're ready, drop down to your knees, hips slightly back, bend your elbows, chest and chin. And then see if you can just push back up so your torso is in line with your elbows, your half chaturanga. And then once again, knees, chest, chin, tailbone moving up, shoulders away from the ears, walk your knees back, rest your toes on the mat, lengthen your toes towards the wall behind, inhale, come up to cobra. So really push up as much as you can without your hip points leaving the mat, elbows in towards the torso, shoulders away from the ears, make a natural extension of your spine, Tuck your toes in, come up through your knees, hips up and back. Down dog. Push the mat forward with your palms, spread your fingers, externally rotate your arms at the shoulders, internally rotate your thighs and the hips, which means heels slightly wider than your big toes. Look forward between your fingertips, take your left knee in towards the chest, Come up on the balls of your right foot, slide forward to plank, left foot all the way forward between your palms. 
drop down on your right knee. Inhale, slowly come up. Take your right arm up. Circle it all the way back behind your right knee. Keep pushing your tailbone down and forward. Walk your right fingertips back towards your right heel. If you want, take your left arm up and back. Circle. Keep walking your fingertips back. So inhale, spine tall. Exhale, take your heart up towards the ceiling. Stay with your breath. Four, three, two, one. Circle back. Palms on either side of the front foot. Tuck your back toes in. Pick up your right knee. Keep it straight. Right palm next to left foot. Left palm outside left knee. Inhale, spine tall. Exhale, twist. Reach up. Push down with your right palm. Keep the back knee straight. Keep your hips low. Reach across. Look up at your left palm. Three, two, one. Circle your palm down. Back foot all the way forward. Feet are hip distance apart. Keep folding in. Inhale, come up halfway. Flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms all the way up and back. And palms together in front of your heart. Close your eyes. Stay with your breath. How many thoughts per second are you now thinking? How many beats per minute is your heart at now? When you're ready, blink your eyes open. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up and back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, bend your knees, fingertips on either side. Right foot all the way back. Get your left foot in the, on the center line. Your right heel goes down. So left heel in line with right arch. Extend your right arm, come up, warrior two. Keep pushing your right leg down towards your right ankle. Spine tall, left knee straight, left pinky toe pushing into the mat, arms reaching across. Your face turned over your left shoulder, looking far into the horizon through the tip of your left index finger. Drop your right palm, circle your left palm up and back, reverse your warrior. Inhale, come back, warrior two. Left palm on left thigh, circle your right arm across, intense side stretch. Keep opening the right shoulder behind. Drop your left palm down to the left ankle if you want to. Reach through your right fingertips. Look up at your right thumb. Stay with your breath. Slowly come back, warrior two. Wiggle your arms around. Front foot all the way back to plank. Hold plank for a bit. Chin up. Yogi's got choice, knees, chest, chin or half chaturanga or full chaturanga start now if you're doing chaturanga stay elbow high chin up lower yourself all the way down toes flat on the mat circle your shoulders up back and down inhale come up to cobra so today is all cobra no up dog See if you're feeling a compression in your lower back. See if you can push your thighs in towards each other without actually moving them to see if that compression in the lower back eases up a bit. See if you can reach your heart further forward. See if you can get your shoulders away from your ears. Tuck your toes in, come up through your knees, hips up and back, down dog.
look forward, get your right foot all the way forward between your palms. Keep it a little to the right side of the mat. Stay on the balls of your left foot. Inhale, sweep your arms up. High lunge. Keep taking your tailbone down and forward as much as you keep reaching higher up with your fingertips. Both your hip points facing forward. Reach up. When you're ready, take your right palm, circle it behind you, hold on to the outer edge, outer thigh, your outer left thigh. Take your left palm outside your right knee. Inhale, spine tall, exhale, twist to the right. We keep moving your tailbone down and forward. Try to look back over your right shoulder. Slowly on twist, come back up. Windmill your palms all the way down. Back foot all the way forward. Deep forward fold. Knee straight, hips over heels. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up. Stay vertical. Get onto your tippy toes. Stay as high as possible. And only if you feel like it, with your heels raised, see if you can bend your knees, get into a balancey chair pose. So keep taking your hips back and down, but your hips or your heels up. Try not leaning forward too much. Take your heart back. Stay on the balls of your feet. And then slowly release. Palms in front of your heart. Close your eyes. Check in with your breath. That last bit you don't really need to do. If you feel it's too much, forget about it. You just want to enjoy the balance, go ahead. Try and keep improving it with each round, which is a hint about what is going to come. When you're ready, blink your eyes open, circle your arms all the way up and back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, bend your knees, fingertips on either side. Get your left foot all the way back. Scoot your right foot into the center line. Drop your left heel down, heel to arch alignment. Push your left pinky toe into the mat. Hips down and low. Extend your left arm. Inhale, come up, warrior two. Left hip down towards the left ankle, left pinky toe in the mat, left knee straight, spine tall, neither leaning forward nor leaning back, just vertical. Arms pushing out on either side energetically, face turned over your right shoulder, looking calmly into the horizon. Drop your left palm, take your right palm up and back, circle. Reach down with your left fingers. Reach up and back with your right fingertips. Look up at your right thumb. Circle back, warrior two. Right forearm on right thigh. Circle your left arm across. Keep pushing your hips down and forward. Look up at your left thumb. If you want, right palm reaches down to right ankle, but left shoulder moves up and back. So spiral your heart up towards the ceiling. Keep your left elbow straight for three, two, circle back, warrior two. Wheel your arms around, right foot all the way back to plank, shoulders over wrist, hips in line with shoulders, knee straight, chin up. Knee stress, chin, half chaturanga, full chaturanga, yogi's choice. 
if you're doing full chaturanga push back to plank if you're coming back to plank push back down to chaturanga hold five four three two one slowly down rest your toes on your mat circle your shoulders up back and down push up cobra lengthen your toes towards the wall behind push your inner thighs in towards each other so rather than push i think i should use the word squeeze lengthen your heart up and forward shoulders away from the ears tuck your toes in come up through your knees hips up and back down dog see if you can straighten your knees a little more see if you can get your heels down so that you can actually peel your toes off the mat external rotation of the arms the shoulders then slowly look forward between your fingertips get your left foot all the way forward a little to the left stay on the balls of your right foot inhale circle your arms all the way up tailbone reaching down and forward left palm moves all the way back and outside your right thigh right palm outside left knee inhale spine tall exhale twist so if you can't get outside your right thigh just hold wherever maybe your right hip wherever is convenient just get that leverage every inhale lengthen your spine every exhale twist inhale lengthen your spine exhale set your tailbone down and forward a little more look over your left shoulder towards the back try not to buckle in to your right knee untwist inhale arms up exhale release your fingertips down back foot all the way forward feet are hip distance apart forward fold catch your breath inhale halfway flat back chin up exhale forward fold inhale circle sweep your arms all the way up come on to the balls of your feet reach up now you can just stay here practice your balance here if you want go for the chair pose push your hips back and down without taking your heart forward as much as you can so keep your heart moving back keep your heels moving up keep your arms next to your ears keep your chin up lower your hips down come on two more inches three two and let it go palms in front of your heart Check in with your breath. Slowly release. Let's move for our first balance. I notice I'm a little out of range. so probably need to pull it back a bit okay so we're going to do the tree pose now for those of you who feel balance is a challenge keep a chair next to you so keep the chair to your left because we're going to take the right knee up so get your right heel up push the heel into your groin and push the foot into the thigh and the thigh into the foot now why do i say push the foot into the thigh because if you just keep it there chances are it's going to slip down and you're never going to have the grip on your balance so you got to kind of actively push the thigh towards the foot and the foot towards the thigh then if you're already feeling a little challenge with your balance hold on to the chair your right knee push it back towards the wall behind your left hip point push it back so instead of being you know heeling in like this 
Keep it all nice and open, external rotation, spine tall. If you want, take your arms up, not if you want, you must. Keep taking your palms up next to your ears, keep reaching up. Now, if balance is a challenge, go on, hold on to the chair and just take one arm up. Now, the palm that's holding the chair, release, check your balance. If you feel you're toppling over, go ahead, hold the chair. But don't hold it for dear life. Just kind of keep one finger for the balance. Then release. If you feel you've got it, go up. If you feel you're falling, you know you can just hold the chair anytime you want. Now, for those of you who are not really struggling with your tree and you want a little bit of a challenge, get your right palm down, chin mudra, on your right thigh and bend your tree. Without getting your right knee forward. So keep pushing your right knee back and keep bending your tree as much as you can. Reach across with your left fingertips. And slowly release. So when you release, get your palms back in front of your heart and let your right foot go, shake it out. So now we switch to the other side. So get your chair to the right. And this time push down into your right foot. Take your left heel up into your groin. Now, if sometimes this is not available and you don't have that uh, bend in your left knee or your right knee, feel free to put it against the calf. If you find even that is challenging, put your toes down on the floor and your heel on the calf. So this kind of makes it really easy. But today, just go ahead and challenge yourself with some furniture. See how high up you can get your heel. Ideally, it should be pushing into your groin and then the foot into the thigh and the thigh into the foot. So another way of seeing it is when your foot is pushing into the thigh, if the thigh kind of your hip kind of bulges out, then push that back in without releasing the pressure on the foot. So that's your foot and thigh pushing in towards each other, left knee moving towards the wall behind, right hip point moving towards the wall behind, spine growing tall, inhale, take your arms up. If you're using the chair, hold on for balance. If not, go ahead, complete your tree. So keep taking your arms up. Some people like to kind of keep the palms together and push into the palms as they take the tree even taller. The best way to do it is to push down even more firmly into your right foot. That's like root to rise. Some people like to keep their palms parallel, your arms parallel. And some people like to even kind of just do a V. So find your tree today. And then if you want to complicate your life, Chin mudra with your left palm, the back of your left palm on your left thigh. Inhale your right side even taller and then bend over. So all this is only if you want to do it. Stay with your breath. With each inhale, increase the right side of your torso. With each exhale, push down a little more, three, two, one, slowly release, let it go. So just to close out that external rotation, get down to your mats and we do the fire log. So your right calf is parallel to the top edge of your mat. Imagine the top edge of my mat is here. Your left ankle is on top of your right knee and your left knee is on top of your right ankle. So this is the fire log position. My calves and my thighs form a triangle. So it's not exactly cross-legged. Remove the flesh from underneath of you, fingertips down, spine tall, walk your fingertips forward. And release. 
slowly walk your fingertips back, switch your calves, so this time your left calf is down parallel to the top edge of your mat, your right calf is on top of your left calf, remove the flesh from underneath of you, fingertips down, inhale, spine roll, exhale, fold forward, as far as it will go. slowly come back release your legs and come back to standing we are moving to warrior three so for warrior three stand close to the top edge of your mat like when we start with our uh, sun salutations Take your chin and slide it so that, you know, you're just hinging from your hips. Your hips remain over your heels and push that chair forward so that your fingertips are on the top edge of the chair. Yeah, I can, you can see. Right. So, you ideally, your Spine should be parallel to the floor, but then it'll depend on the height of your chair. So I've got a pretty tall back chair. So my spine is not exactly parallel, but what I can do if you've got the shoulder flexibility is to keep pushing down. So your fingertips are slightly higher than your head and that's okay. Then get your feet together, big toes together, heels together, just remain symmetrical. When you're ready, push all your weight into your right foot and gently just float your left foot back and up. So use the chair to hold your warrior three. Now first work on the alignment. So your left hip point is facing down. Try not to open your left hip up and it becomes difficult if you're holding on the chair because your chair keeps you aligned. You know that your fingertips have to fall flat on the top edge of the chair. Reach through your back heel or point your toes. Keep your toes either pointing down or pointing back, but please not to the side, because the minute you do it to the side, your hip starts moving up. Reach through your toes or your heels, reach forward through your fingertips. So maybe you need to keep pushing the chair forward Keep pulling your navel in towards your spine. Try to keep your heel up at least in line with your hips because you're fully supported. When you're ready, slowly get your foot down and release, come up. So I realize I'm talking a lot. And when I'm talking, the chance of getting into your stillness is very slim. So we'll do the other side with me talking, and then we'll do warrior three again. And this time you choose whether you want to use the chair or you don't want to use the chair. If you're not using the chair, try and hold your pose up for as long as you can, but try and drop into stillness, mental stillness first, before your physical stillness. And I know yoga, we usually use the physical body to get into mental stillness. Today, let's reverse it. First, try and get your mental stillness and then move into physical stillness. But first, we'll just do the other side. So once again, hinge from your hips, reach your heart forward, reach your fingertips forward, hold on to your chair, the top edge of your chair, and then transfer all your weight onto your left foot and gently float your right leg back and up. Keep reaching back through your right toes or your right heel. Keep your right hip facing down. Your hips are level and you're reaching forward through your fingertips. Keep reaching back with your heel. Take your heel up. 
at least in line with your hips. Stay with your breath, pull your navel gently in. Three, two, one, slowly let go. Shake it out. When you're ready, set your intention for mental stillness, get into your breath, find your way to warrior three with your left leg moving up, whichever way is comfortable for you. I start with palms in front of my heart, just lean forward, take my left leg up, and then extend my arms mindfully. Stay with your stillness. Slowly release back to Tadasan. Stay with your mental stillness. Other side, so weight into your left foot, right foot floats back mindfully with stillness. Slowly back, stay in Tadasan. If you want, gently close your eyes. See if the quality of your stillness changes because you're no longer balancing. Is one stillness more effortful than the other? Does the more effortful stillness make the easier one easier? Gently open your eyes and we move to dancer's pose. So once again, get the chair. Uh, yeah, in front of you. So stand just behind the chair. Push all your weight into your right foot, bend your left knee, hold your left, or left foot, keep your knees together, push the heel into your hip, and keep pushing your elbow towards the center line behind. This is balance in itself. If you want, just practice here. If you want, get your right fingertips onto the chair. From here, keeping your knees together, push the foot back and down, extend your left elbow, open out your left shoulder, and then take your toes up, knee up. You're still holding onto the chair. Take your heart forward. If you want, release the chair, get your right arm next to your right ear fingers and chin mudra, but your back foot keeps pushing into your palm. 
back and up. Move into your stillness. If you find it challenging, by all means, hold on to the chair. When you're ready, slowly release. Come back to Tadasana. Gently open your eyes. We move to the other side. So Bend your right knee in, hold on to your right foot with your right palm. Keep your knees together, push the heel into your hip. Gently push your hips slightly forward to get the stretch on your quadricep. Left palm or left fingertips on the chair. Keep taking your spine tall, push your right elbow in towards the center line. Then push your foot back and down. Extend your right elbow, open your right shoulder. Knee going up, toes going up, lean forward as much as you can. Keep pushing the foot back and up. If you want, release your left palm next to your left ear, chin mudra. Move to your stillness. When you're ready, slowly release. Come back to Tadasan, push down equally into all four corners of your feet. Check in with the quality of your stillness. Be mindful of which stillness is more effortful. One is easier, one is more difficult most of the time. Stay with your breath. Then slowly release. We'll do one more balance. This time it's a forward fold. So keep your chair to the side. Uh, maybe keep the seat facing you. So, yeah to the side. So the leg that's away from the chair, in my case, it's my right leg and I'm mirroring you, so I'm uh, aware of that. Get the heel up to the junction of your hip and your thighs. So that's the junction. So get the heel in towards the junction and then see if your knee can stay down. Now, if this is too much, and you just don't have the you know alignment to do this feel free to just cross your ankle just on top of your knee so my knee is just below my ankle so take a position that is easy so i'll start from here but make sure the knee is pointing down it's not coming up like this it's down here and okay, so first just watch. So release your pose. I'm going to go with this and then I'm just going to go into a forward fold. Now, either you go for the forward fold with a full balance or hold on to the chair and then work on straightening your standing knee and taking your heart towards the knee. If you want to test your flexibility, hold on. So it's my right knee that's bent. I'm taking my right palm behind me, holding on to the right toe on the left side and holding forward. And then if you want, 
Release even this palm, hold on to the back of your calf, pull yourself in. But the chair is good because if you ever feel overbalanced, you can hold on to the chair and keep taking your heart in towards your knee as much as you can. So let's start. Push your weight into your left foot. Now decide whether you want your ankle crossing over your knee or your heel in at the junction, knee down. If you're here, you can directly just hold on to the chair and bend forward, or you can do the whole shebang. Stillness. Hold Tadasan, with your palms in front of your heart. Find your stillness. Then we move to the other side. If you're using a chair, please move it to the other side. Push all your weight into your right foot, left ankle over left knee, or if you want, left heel at the junction of the hip, right hip and torso. Keep that left knee down. So either use the chair as support and pull forward or do the entire balance, whatever works for you. Find your stillness. in front of your heart, stand tall, find your stillness. Slowly release. I think it's time to move to a small shavasan. So get rid of your chair. Lie down on your mat. Completely relaxed. Completely still. And check in with this level of stillness compared to just the Tadasan stillness. Relax your joints, palms facing up, elbows slightly away from the body, shoulders, hips relaxing, slowly lengthen your inhales and more so your exhales. You don't try and control your breath too much, just ease into a slower breath. Just feel the stillness here.
slowly guide your attention back to here and now. Nice, long, deep inhale. And then hold your breath in for a bit. When you're ready to exhale, gently bend your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a nice little squeeze. And then gently rock from side to side. And then whenever you feel ready, roll over to your right. Turn your face down, blink your eyes open. Take your time, come back to seated. Sit wherever is comfortable. Palms in front of your heart. Gently bow your head to your palms. Go back to the intention you started with. Learning stillness through balance. What we discovered was that the quality of your stillness depends on what the environment is throwing at you. So obviously, if you're in a state of mind that is completely relaxed, you have no worries, having a nice holiday on the beach or in the middle of a nice little forest, your stillness is going to be easy. But while you're in the middle of work, while you're in the middle of anxiety, while there are pressures, social pressures being put on you, financial demands being put on you, relationship demands being put on you, balance demands being put on you by a half crazy yoga teacher. You still have the ability to move into stillness. It is a little more effortful, but it's worth it because it helps you deal with those pressures. And unless you move into stillness, you're never really going to achieve anything. You're never really going to deal with those pressures. You're just going to be reacting rather than moving with intent. And that's the difference that stillness brings to the quality of your life. Instead of being just reactive, and you know, you, you've been reactive in a warrior three, you're just flopping over the place to bringing that stillness and then moving into a warrior three. So just try and take that lesson back with you to life. As always, absolute pleasure practicing with you. Last stretch, inhale, take your arms all the way up. Stretch, reach, get your energy back. Namaste, yogis. Thank you. See you guys on Tuesday. And remember, hold on to your stillness.